my little big, God is the judge, continue to do it in the name of the Lord, in the name of love, and you will succeed. Amen. Amen. So these are the things. See, you know, family, very, very important. How many organizations, how many churches, how many potential men and women of God creates what we call the self-destructive condemnation by relying to self, human strength and ingenuity. How many of them? You can you cannot count it. What happened to Titanic? Titanic was sailing straight for the icebergs with many years ago sunk that great luxury liner. They call her millionaire special. Four city blocks long, 11 stories high, picture 11 story high, powered by triple propellers, protected by the latest, most ingenious devices, luxurious and beautiful beyond words. She caught the fancy of the world on April 10, 1912. She slipped out of the Southampton on her maiden voyage to New York. Less than five minutes later, she went down to 12,000 feet on the ice of water. In less than five minutes, and says more, she, that ship sank, and that ship was the symbol of man's power. That was the symbol, majestic, magnificent work of human hands, colossal, unsinkable. But when the unsinkable sun, something went down with it. No one would ever again feel the same confidence in human strength. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not this strong man glory in his might. Let not the rich man, I'm so rich, I have the power for spot and everything in the top of my fingers. Glory in his riches. But let him glory, glory in this. The Bible says that he might know me that I am the Lord. The word Lord is suffering so being who is in control of the heavens and earth. That they might know me that I am the Lord. Which exercises loving kindness in judgment in all their promotion come not from the east or from the west but from the Lord he can even change the decisions that they can and God's revealing to us let no one depend on the human ingenuity wisdom and strength that all who trust and depend on God he said Jesus his word to praise the Lord when you do that and you will come to the knowledge that God is supreme and he is everything The second reason why there's no condemnation for you and for me is because, listen to me, these are important points for all of us, for me, for all of us, because of the renewed, renewed in your transformed character. How can you be encouraged to become a believer when one who is sharing her faith or his faith is a complainer? There was a man who was complaining, you know, you know, he was a Christian, oh, I cannot go in that place because I have no shoes. Until he found that the people in that place has no shoes. <laughs> how, can you, how can you be motivated for a person who talk about Lord Jesus Christ in every day after he loves to gossip? People sharing Jesus, she asked, what happened? How is that up with your friend? You know, Jesus is good. But what happened, by the way? <laughs> you know, you know, these are reality, these are practical yes. things. Yes. And a brother was promoted, bought a brand new house, bigger than yours, and he came up. How can he pay that big house that he bought? That's a big amount of two thousand dollars a month. He's just working in the restaurant. 
Christians are Christians who work in a restaurant and buy $2,000 a month amortization. Amen. They buy for some be happy for those who are happy and be sad for those who are sad. Being a community of believers, you have the affection to relate. If he is promoted, then bless you are promoted and above all the glory of all return to Jesus Christ, not yours. What happened to the relation of that husband and wife? You know, uh, it seems that they are not sweet anymore. Oh, praise the Lord, thank you by the way, yesterday. How can you believe and be saved with a young lady sharing Christ, but she is a flirt? How can you believe? And I tell you, this is our things that I have encountered in countries of the world. I admit this. How can you believe a young guy sharing his faith? And one guy was, we used to be a Christian, and what happened is that his story, he became a follower of the satanic group. And the other guy at the age of 20, he said to me, you know, and I don't mention my, I was a pastor, I never bring my name outside. I want them to call me Johnny. My name is in, insignificant. I want to be a pastor only in, in the pulpit, but outside I want to be like everybody else. I want to walk where they walk. So I was there, never stopped. I was working almost two years, and he said to me, you know what? I was a Christian. I am so dedicated Christian to the Lord. But every time I share, I was a little bit old. There is something that is holding me up. Uh, I, cannot, I cannot share Jesus. But you know what? Just three beers. Three beers. I tell you, I can testify and I can lead somebody to the Lord. I said, brother, that's not the spirit of the Lord. That's the spirit of alcohol. <laughs> that's a great story. And, and so, how can you believe an anointed young man under drugs and can preach and can pray for healing, but under the spirit of marijuana? And that there are several quote unquote Christians. Listen to me. Christianity is not charisma, but it is a life backed up with consistent godly character. A very familiar verse, Paul said, if anyone be in Christ, you know that you can call him. He is a new creation. All things are passed away, behold, all things become new. It seems it's easy to, to call, all things become new. New things has come. For the old life is gone, a new life has begun. It's more than character. So when you are for Christ today, abounding a lot of his influence. And I found out later on, to my surprise, he was what invited me to go to Japan in 1981 and to become a pastor in, in America in 1982. And I did pastor in there for just two months. And I come to know it was a shock to me as a young man beginning to work in America. I found out that he was living together with the sister of his secretary. He was still married with a woman with two kids. It shocked me. He was fooling around with another woman right there and right there. I was just one month in New York, pastoring the cream of the crop. These are doctors and uh, nurses and professionals and lawyers in the Twin Tower, and I was teaching Bible study in the 25th floor of the Twin Tower, uh, a doctor and a, a, a lawyer, a immigration lawyer. And right there in New York, I made up my mind. It's not because I was proud, I can do that. I can sympathize, I made up my mind, I made up my decision. I said, I will not work with this man living a double standard life. I can get along with that kind of life. Yes, I still fall, I stumble, but at that time of that is obvious is scandal of sin. He was shocked to know that I quit the work. It was a very prestigious job. I have my three historic building given to me by a black sister, that's mine. I was given a six months old brand new Cadillac. And as our doctor could probably earn five during the time, six, seven thousand dollars a month. I quit and he started a very small beginning in California rather than to enjoy this prosperity, living and compromising with the leadership who is living a double standard life. Yeah. And they are blessed me in California. Bless me and I see pastors rising up, train pastors from different places, and there are pastors in different places of America today. Why? His way of life is opposite to what he preached. 
This is a minister, very gifted man. I salute the gift. Listen to me. The gift is less important. What matters is the integrity of your character. <laughs> you know, last phrase, who 